And welcome to another season of The Cardinal's Nest here on HBC TV 25. This is the show devoted exclusively to St. Mary's University and our athletic programs. I'm Dean Beckman, our co-host once again for the 2018-19 season is our Sports Information Director, Donnie Netto. And as we did on last year's show, every year we're going to kind of spotlight, or every show we'll spotlight a specific sport. And this week it's going to be volleyball. So we have Jackie Keeker, our head volleyball coach with us a little bit later on in the program. We'll bring in Lily Braun. Uh, she is uh, the, uh, the junior setter for the Cardinals volleyball team. So Jackie, welcome. You get to kick off our new season. How about that for an honor, right? Yeah, it's exciting. Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. So Jackie, now this is your second season mm -hmm. as uh, the Cardinals volleyball coach. So tell us about how you feel going into this year, just having that one year under your belt, kind of the difference between the start of season one and now the start of season two, just as far as how accustomed you are now to being the head coach. Well, definitely got the jitters out from the first year. So second year coming in, I feel like I have more of a grasp of what I want this program to look like. And uh, yeah, it's definitely making it um, just the changes that I really wanted to incorporate. And after having a year of making all the mistakes and, you know, learning uh, how to be a head coach, I think that uh, this year I, I definitely feel more comfortable um, and I, I want to put an identity on the program. One follow-up to that, of course, you were the longtime assistant mm -hmm. under Mike Lester, mm -hmm. but uh, becoming a head coach, I think, is, you know, for, for most assistant coaches, what they aspire to. At what point last year did it hit you? Like, hey, this is my program now, right? Was it right away? Was it right as soon as you got the job? Or did it take a little time for that to sink in? It took a little time because I noticed the beginning of season, I tried to do a lot of the things the same as Mike Lester. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep a lot of the good things that he brought. Um, but definitely, uh, probably halfway through, I was like, you know, I just need to be myself and, and I need to sure. uh, bring my kind of fire to the program mm -hmm. that I, I want to see. And, so. and Donnie, as sports information director, you've seen a lot of assistants become head coaches. I would imagine that that's a very normal thing to have happen, right? Yeah, now. it really is. And, and we were talking off camera, uh, Luther's uh, head coach right now, Brittany Sisk, was uh, a volleyball player here at St. Mary's, and so she played four years here, mm -hmm. went on, and, and is now the head coach at Luther. We see that a lot. Uh, Lexi Asimos, who uh, was a great setter for, for St. Mary's for a number of years, for four years, uh, is the assistant coach at Dominican. So I uh, got to see her this, this past weekend as well. So you do see a lot of people who are, who are um, graduates of the game and uh, moving on into the coaching ranks. And I mean, Jackie's a great example too. She played at Ole Miss and, and then, uh, you know, went on to be an assistant coach there and, and, and move on here. And I guess my first question for you, Jackie, would be what was the biggest change you made from last year to this year in terms of how you coach this team? Well, something that I, I feel like I brought this year that's different is weekly goals. Last year we were thinking end of season goals. And this year I said, you know, we can't think that far ahead in our season because we just have to take it one week at a time. And so I incorporated weekly goals for this team. And um, find that, you know, if we just take little bites at a time, I believe that we'll eventually get there. So trusting that, that process as we go through. Um, and so that's something that I feel was a change this year that I think uh, the team is really latching on to. Um, before Sugarloaf, you know, what was our goal? What was our passing goal? What, was, what did we want to see us achieve and learn through the weekend? And, and we achieved that goal going 4-0, and, and, and it felt really great, and the team is coming off of a really good weekend. So. Talk a little bit about the weekend. I know that um, if, you, if you look at the scores, you kind of went both ends of the spectrum, 2-3-0 mm -hmm. oh sweeps on Friday and then 2-3-2 two, two matches on, uh, on Saturday. As you look back on the week, uh, what, what kind of things do you take away from a tournament like that? You know, we came out, we came out you know, on fire right away uh, against those. T they were two really tough teams, Augustan and Dominican. And, um, you know, the next day we played the morning match, and, and I think the morning had, had a part to do with it. And then, um, you know, Luther, we, we play them every year, and they're always a really hard team uh, to compete against. And so um, it became a mentally tough day for us on that second day. Uh, and so finishing in five, was was what happened and and the first day we were we were fresh and ener energetic and and mentally ready and then the next day you could see that it took a mental toll on us and so it was i think it was really good for them to see that they can overcome those things um, and just taking control of a match early
And, so. and I've got to believe as, as head coach, it really tells you a lot about the team, yes. right? Uh, that yeah, they, they can go out and sweep some folks, but when you get in a tough match, yes. uh, that they can come through in the end. So mm -hmm. sometimes uh, you can learn from those three, two matches, maybe even more than, mm -hmm. than the ones where you sweep, right? Yes, yeah. yes, so. for sure. As you, as you look at this team, you've got some new faces, got a lot of, I don't want to say old faces, but you got a lot of returners. Yes. But uh, talk a little bit about this week in terms of individuals that, that maybe stood out to you. I know Brandy Blattner was uh, on the all-tournament team. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when is she not? Right. But, uh, you know, Lily had a, a, an outstanding uh, weekend as, as your setter. But a couple of the freshmen really stood out, too. Carly Cronin, not a freshman, but a sophomore, really did a nice job as well. Talk a little bit individually about uh, some players that maybe caught your eye. Uh, this weekend. Well, you know, we Brandy, you know, has always been all tournament, and you know, something that we try to go back to is who orchestrated that, who set her up for success. And you know, my thought really goes back to Lily. She, you know, we're running a um, a five one this year, and this is this is new to her, and it's new to this team. And um, she really took on a role this weekend as just being on the court full time. And when, when things got hard, you could see her really pull the team together. And she really stuck out to me because she was consistent. And uh, when things got hard, you, you could see her bring them all together, you know, for uh, a long period of time of just like, what do we need to do next? And, and just staying composed. And um, she, she was just a very steady person for us on the court. Um, so she stood out. And, you know, someone else's DJ is our, our freshman who um, started as libero for us this weekend. She... You know, she's just so athletic, and, and she kind of stepped into that role as a freshman. You can imagine the, the you know, anxiety she must feel from, from not really knowing what to expect. But So those are two, but, you know, they all, they all really came together in crucial times, and, and our bench was just so um, involved, and, and you could just feel the energy from them on the bench, and so they, they all pulled together. You know, I know as a coach, and, and this team seems to be one of the deeper teams that St. Mary's has had in terms of talent, mm -hmm. but uh, you get a tournament like this, and, and it's gotta be hard because you wanna win, mm -hmm. but you wanna see a lot of players play so that you can kind of see where they're, where they're at. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of balance that, you know, in terms of you probably could keep your regular lineup mm -hmm. all four matches, hopefully get victories, because that's your, your solid lineup, but you need to see some other people. How do you kind of keep that balance? Well, it's nice having a deep bench, and I feel like we, we have a lot of talent. Um, you know, first day is establishing who's that, who's that core group, and then second day, who can really fill in. You know, Gloria um, on the first day stepped in for us, and then second day, Coral uh, went in as that other right side, and, and she did very, very well. And, you know, same thing with our outsides. Um, we changed an outside uh, to Erin um, Lime, who, who comes off, and she, she's a, a very athletic individual. So just to, to be able to see the, the depth of our bench and knowing that when we're tired, we still have fresh legs on the side that can come in and perform. And so finding the balance is tweaking little things here and there and then putting them in an uncomfortable position where they know that they can do it. Um, so just some changes, you know, not not to the extreme, but enough that to show that we do have depth and that we're, we're all on the same page. You know, having that depth as a head coach, I'm sure is a luxury, mm -hmm. but what challenges does it pose, right? Because there's only so much playing time to go around right. with, with the positions on, on the court. So how do you balance that challenge as a head coach? Well, you put them in situations in practice. We start in practice and, and we talk about it. That's, that's the big thing is we want to um, have conversations about it. The team knows where they stand and, and will have conversation in games when, when you know that a teammate is struggling, we can, we can put you in and ready to perform. And so um, we, we gave them this sheet that kind of kind of goes um, in layers of where, where they stand. Are they a, a, a stud, a winner, a steady Eddie, or are they, uh, you know, somebody that comes in is just an inner energizer for us. And so um, establishing what we need in that match right then and there is when we make the decision of who to put in. Well, as an SID, I know Donnie's a stud, right? We, we know that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, as you, as you now move forward, you go to a Stevens Point this weekend for three matches. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the team grounded? I mean, 4-0 is great. 
It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome, but how do you make sure that they realize that, okay, those four are behind us, mm -hmm. and now we've got to focus on Stevens Point on Friday, and then Lakeland and, and mm -hmm. Concordia, Wisconsin on Saturday. How do you, how do you approach that? We, well, we're going to go into practice today and establish new goals for the weekend and understand that we're coming off of a, of a good weekend, but there's still things that we need to improve on. And, you know, we did see some things that um, need more repetition and getting refocused on, okay, we have work to do this weekend. And, you know, yesterday, we gave them yesterday off, and, and uh, so they should be coming in fresh and they should be coming in focus that we're not finished yet. This is just um, a beginning point for us in that, we have, we have work to do and it's just one thing at a time, one week at a time. Now we have a new tournament, new challenges, really great teams that we're going to face. What do we want to keep building on? And so just setting new goals for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, two more questions. One, uh, we're going to bring in Lily Braun next. And you've talked a lot about her already, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, tell us a little bit more about Lily that she might not be willing to share with us. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a hard question. Keep in mind, we'll ask her the same question about you. Oh, great. great. So you got to be fair. Sure, sure. You know, in the past, we've always run that 6-2. And um, we were actually talking about it before we came here. When you're running a 6-2 as a setter and you're coming off for three rotations, to be expected to come back on with energy and to lead that team for those three rotations is a difficult one. Um, and they did a very good job of doing that for the past three years. Um, but... This year, this weekend, I really saw her a leadership piece of Lily that that I think has been kind of held back just because we've always run that 6-2. And um, this weekend, we really saw some fire from her, saw really good emotion on the court. And, um, you know, I, I saw a lot more confidence in herself. And so that that's a piece that um, I think is new this year for sure. And... Um, we, we met last week and watched some film and just had a conversation and, and just talking about what she wants to see for this team. And um, it's really exciting to see that leader that, that thinks about the team first. And so I, that's what I would say about her. So the last question, Jackie, is uh, I want you to tell us about one of your loves. And it, uh, so tell us about the car. Uh, you've got an electric <laughs> car, right? <laughs> Yes, I have an electric car. It's nice not having a gas bill every month, <laughs> but it's hard um, finding plug-ins all around Winona because, you know, sure, <laughs> you right. run out of battery, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, that, is, that definitely is your little baby, yeah. though. It, it is. A lot of people don't know how much... Uh, how much uh, amp it has, you know. I, mm -hmm. I like letting coworkers riding it and then giving them the volt, to the you know, speed, <laughs> and they're like, "Whoa, this thing really does have some." So I do. I, I love that car. <laughs> All right, so. uh, Jackie Keeker, head volleyball coach. Thanks for joining us. First guests of this season on the Cardinals Nest. Good luck the rest of the year. Thank here. you very much. All right, stay tuned. Lily Braun, the junior setter, will be in next here on HBC's Cardinals Nest. Elevate your HBC TV experience with the latest technology to hit your whole home entertainment system. Record up to six programs simultaneously and save up to 350 hours of your favorite shows. Pause a program you're watching in one room and pick right up where you left off in another. Video on demand, wireless set-top boxes and mobile device streaming, apps including Alexa, Netflix, YouTube, and more. Call 888-474-9995 to learn more or visit hbci.com forward slash elevate today. And we're back on the Cardinals Nest here on HBC. This week, we are spotlighting the volleyball team. We just had on the head coach, Jackie Keeker, and now we welcome Lily Braun, the junior setter from the volleyball team. So Lily, thanks for joining us here on the show. Now, you're from Manorville, Minnesota, so you're yep. from the Southeast Minnesota area. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit how you got your start in volleyball in Manorville and then how you ended up uh, coming to St. Mary's. Uh, well, my first volleyball experience was when I was in elementary, and uh, one of my really good friends asked me, I'm, she was doing a camp, and I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds really fun. So I thought I would try it, and so I did, and then I've been playing ever since fourth grade. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. How did, you end up, how did you end up coming to St. Mary's? What, uh, what attracted you to, uh, to the St. Mary's campus? Um, well, my mom did, uh, she went to graduate school here and got her master's and then she actually teaches as an adjunct faculty, faculty in, at St. Mary's as well and then uh, actually Coach Lester used to come to a lot of my games and he recruited me so I was really comfortable getting here. So. Now, now Lily, I'm the faculty athletic representative mm -hmm. for St. Mary's so I always like to talk a little academics mm -hmm. and you are now an actuarial science major. Now we might have yeah. some people watching who don't know what an actual actuarial science major is all about. So 
you are studying to become an actuary. So yeah. what does that mean? Um, to be an actuary is basically working for an insurance company that uh, calculates risks and for other companies that are have the insurance company as for insurance, I right, guess. So. Right. so you have to be really good at math, basically. Right? Yeah, a, there's a, a lot of math. It's a very math-heavy <laughs> curriculum, yeah. correct? Yes. That rules not even. We will beyond. never be actuaries. <laughs> That's, <for sure>. That's, <laughs> sure. That's actually true. Lily, let's talk about the weekend. We talked mm -hmm. talk with Coach Kiefer about, about, uh, about the 4-0 start and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I would, I'd really like to just kind of focus on, on your performance, 175 assists in four, in four matches. Uh, that's like a third of what you had all of last year. So, <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, it was an outstanding weekend. I mean, you know, Jackie was right. You definitely stood out. You were you were one of the people that uh, you know certainly raised more than a few eyebrows. Talk about the weekend from your standpoint because you were playing a same position but kind of a different role. So talk a right. little bit about that. Um, well, it was really nice. Well, I played five one all throughout high school and in the off season. Coming in doing a six two, it was like really nice because it kind of like eased. And having Brittany uh, Hansen like help me and guide me through like the process and stuff was really nice. And then um, running the five one brought me back to uh, high school and like running the court and like you know thinking of different plays to do because this side was really tough and their middle was really fast or something like that. So it was really nice to kind of like think of little I don't know little strategies to like you know get the ball down on the other side. So. Um, it surprised me. I didn't even think that 63 assists were like <laughs> assists were like possible in a set. But right. yeah, it was it was really great. The weekend was really fun. Uh, it was nice to play again and get comfortable with other players. So you know, for those people who may not know a lot about volleyball, talk a little bit about the strategy and and how you do run plays. Do you call them out? Do you you know how do how does your right side know the ball is coming to them? How does your outside know that it's coming to them. Talk a little bit about how that all works. So we have uh, three like specific plays that we run when the ball is coming over kind of like a free ball. So that's like just a really toss ball mm -hmm. over. So we can get a good pass on it and then we can either set like a slide or like a, the right side coming around for like a really quick set or something like that. So um, basically they know because we're like yelling it out or they have to call for it and they can kind of the hitters determine whether or not they should call the certain set based on the pass so it kind of is like an overall like what Jackie was talking about was like first comes the pass like we have to get a good pass in order to make sure that we can actually get a good set and get a kill so and then that's where uh, that communication right all that time working together mm -hmm. in practice and of course the more you can play together in games on the court you develop that chemistry. Volleyball is a lot about chemistry. Maybe mm -hmm. talk about what it's like uh, having played with this team for a few years now and developing that with a lot of these senior players. Um, yeah, it's nice to be well, having work with a lot of them. I actually played uh, club ball with Brittany Flom for a couple years, so that was really neat to come back to St. to come to St. Mary's and actually be back with Brittany Flom because we do have a really good connection um, for her being a middle. And to connect with Brandy on the outside, it's really fun because like sometimes the sets are too high or too low, so we always have to you know determine what's like the middle part. But um, I like working with all the middles because it's fun to run like the quick slides and all that stuff. So yeah. Was it a hard adjustment um, coming from high school to college? I know it's been you know a couple years mm -hmm. now, but was it a, was it a tough adjustment from from Casa Manorville to uh, moving up to St. Mary's? Um, well, Casa Manorville is in a pretty good conference, and so it's really fun to uh, play against really competitive teams. So I guess it was it was a little different because of like such pa fast pace and stuff, and they go for longer plays a lot of the time. So it was kind of different in that perspective, but it also the competitiveness it stayed pretty much the same. When we asked Jackie to talk about you a little bit, one mm -hmm. of the things she brought up was your leadership skill. Uh, so do you see that as uh, a specific role this year? Did you think about that coming into the year that you would have to be a leader? Because you do have a lot of younger players, some freshmen that are seeing a lot of playing time. So what mm -hmm. do you see as your role with the team besides the obvious, which is on the court there? Um, well, I know that it's hard being a freshman coming in and like uh, the whole team knows each other. They're all really good pals and stuff. So I think one thing that uh, we're really trying to do is like bring the freshmen in and like kind of get them 
to, like used to everyone else and get them on the same page because there's always like those inside jokes or like stories from like South Africa this past summer so um, that was always good and then uh, I don't know I think my role for a leader would probably be like really encouraging them like on the court always communicating and um, yeah being ready for the back row attack for the <laughs> um, for the liberos but can you talk a little bit uh, going back to, to playing all the time? You know, mm -hmm. you're on the court the whole the whole match. You played two five setters on on Saturday. Mm -hmm. How did you feel the next day? I mean, you must have been exhausted. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, my shins felt like very rough. <laughs> like, um, but it was it was hard. It was like you had to really dig deep and find that mental toughness that Jackie was talking about. Um, it was really it was really good. Uh, but the fifth the actually playing Luther. It was really tough. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, I need to like, I need to pull something way deep down out of me. So and finally, I was just like, you know what? The last match, you just gotta give it your all. So that's basically what I was mindset was. As a, as a returner, you you experienced it, but now you play these tournaments. You've got four matches in two days. Mm -hmm. This weekend, you'll have three matches in in two days. Then you get into the conference, and it's just one match. Mm -hmm. Is it is it hard to make that adjustment because you're you know. Saturday you played two matches. Next Saturday you'll play two matches, and then all of a sudden you just play one match on a right. on a Wednesday night. Is there a big adjustment to that? Um, I mean, I guess for me, not really, because I just feel like it, taking it one game at a time, and then the next game is it's a new game, so you just kind of have to like reset. But um, going back to like the on, the Wednesday games, um, I think for those games you just kind of got to give it your all and like work hard and stuff like that. So for me, it's just kind of taking it one game at a time. So uh, we asked Jackie about you, mm -hmm. something that uh, you, we, she didn't think you would tell us. What about uh, Coach Keeker? Uh, what can you tell us about her as a head coach that uh, she might not either be willing to admit or maybe not feel comfortable talking about herself on camera? Um, I would say that she's be become really consistent this year. Um, it's nice to know, like, she's very steady steady-headed or level-headed or mm -hmm. that saying so I think that's something that is goes unsaid a lot of the time yeah. so and and how do you feel about she had talked about kind of um, bringing the goals down to kind mm -hmm. of a weekly or micro level yeah how has that been as a player um it's been nice because then you can kind of focus on your set you can find sorry you can right. kind of focus on your skills as an individual so um, for me it's like focusing on the other side like what is the other side doing so I want to be more deceptive in my sets or something like that so that's something that we talked about um, before this past weekend and that was kind of my goal for the week and mm -hmm. was like what strategies can we do and stuff like that so it's nice to focus on like little things for that weekend or week or so it's, instead of overall big goals, because then it's so far away, you've got to right, focus on right. six inches ahead of you. So, so Lily, one of the things we kind of started on last year's show is uh, we'd always let Donnie ask the final questions of the <laughs> athlete. So we'll keep doing that here for 2018-19. Well, I have to say, Dean, I added a, I added a new oh, question good. to the questionnaire this year, and it was, uh, <laughs> tell me your hidden talent. And <laughs> Lily's hidden talent is being comfortable taking a nap just about anywhere. <laughs> what I want to know is, where was the most comfortable place you've taken a nap? Hmm. I'd probably say <laughs> under a table in the library. That wow. was my... <laughs> How about that? Yeah. It's just sometimes it's late nights in, in the library and you just need to take a little break. And mm -hmm. that's, that's my spot. Hey, I'm just glad you're going in the library. But I know as an actuarial science major, you're going to need to. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. Not yeah. bad. Okay, I, could, I can go with one more. Uh, TV character you'd love to spend a day with would be Rachel from Friends. Yep. If you were able to do that, what would you do for that day? Um... Probably go shopping. She was a in early in the show. She was a shopaholic, so it would be kind of fun to see where she would go. So, yeah. Yeah, good, good. All right, Lily Braun, uh, thanks for joining us on the program today. Thank good you. luck the rest of the year. Thanks. So, all right, uh, so stay tuned. Donnie and I will be right back. There's been a lot of changes in St. Mary's athletics. We'll tell you all about those when we return here on HBC. Be sure to check out US Golf TV where you are going to see golf products that you have never seen before. 
You're also going to see golf tips from some of the leading instructors around the country that are truly changing the way people are teaching the game and challenging the status quo. Also, you're going to see fitness tips that are revolutionizing the way PGA Tour pros are training their body and swinging the golf club. If you want something different, if you're looking for some new information, US Golf TV has it. Be sure to check your local listings. US Golf TV, we've got you covered. And we're here to wrap up the Cardinals' nest on HBC, our first show of the 2018-19 season. Glad you could join us here on HBC. Our sports information director is Donnie Netto, and we have a lot of sports information to pass along to you, right, Donnie? Yeah, just just from, from uh, spring, there's been a lot of changes, uh, namely... We have a new women's basketball coach and a new men's basketball coach to, to tell our viewers yeah, about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a busy summer in terms of uh, hiring some coaching positions. Uh, David Foley is now our new women's basketball coach. Uh, he uh, was on campus two weeks ago, so he's uh, kind of off and running. Joe Fano is now our uh, new men's basketball coach. He comes to us from the, from the Illinois area, and uh, he actually starts work today, so he'll be on campus today. We're excited for both of them. Uh, I know that uh, all the players are excited to have coaches in place and, and ready to get their season started. So uh, welcome to, to Coach Foley and to Coach Fano, and, and we'll get you on the show as well and, and, uh, and get your face out there for people to see. But exciting to have those two. The uh, search is still go ongoing for our uh, new athletic director, and uh, hopefully we'll have somebody in place uh, real shortly. All right, so a lot of changes there, but uh, another place where there really is not a change, Donnie, is this is M Club weekend. This is the big weekend where... We uh, honor some Hall of Fame inductees. We have uh, an award ceremony on Friday night for both past and current student athletes, uh, golf outing on Saturday, some alumni games. So this is kind of a weekend where both the current and past student athletes get to come together. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's nice to, uh, to get all of our student athletes, and it's one of those, as we always kind of joke, it's, you always see them in their, in their attire, whether it be a, a basketball uniform or their hockey jersey or whatever, they all get to get dolled up and, uh, and, and dressed up in, in, in nice clothes and come to a, a nice event where we, we do honor our, our two uh, incoming Hall of Fame members, Roger Petluski, and uh, he played basketball for uh, for St. Mary's in the in the uh, 70s, and then we've got uh, uh, Angie Wright, who was a member of the national championship uh, softball team. She'll be inducted as well. So um, that kind of is the culmination of the award ceremony on on uh, Friday night. We'll also announce our outstanding male and female uh, athletes and scholar athletes. That's always uh, exciting. I know we get you to MC that part of it, so that's always that's always fun. And then we have the golf outing on on Saturday, which certainly is a, a huge fundraiser for the M Club and and. Uh, uh, according to the forecast, it should be a nice weekend, so we're looking forward to that. And then we'll have uh, the results of some of those awards for you on next week's program. Right. Uh, we'll close out, Donnie, just about a minute left here, so we can't go through all of the sports, but all of the fall sports have started their seasons, right? So, uh, but really success in women's soccer, men's soccer. I know uh, the golfers did extremely well. We've already heard about the volleyball team, so we're really off and running and off to some really good results. Yeah, it's exciting. Both soccer teams are 2-0 and right now. The women's team is, uh, they won 4-1, uh, to 4-0 to against Martin Luther, and then 7-0 against Lawrence, and then men are also 2-0. and uh, They opened up with a 3-1 win over North Central and then beat Martin Luther 3-0 the following day, so great starts for them. The golf teams are doing very well. Uh, they had some outstanding performances uh, both at the Augsburg Invitational and as well at the St. Benedict Invitational. So they got things going. Cross country teams still waiting to uh, yeah. to get their season underway. <laughs> their their uh, St. Mary's Alumni Open had to be canceled because of rain and, and poor trail conditions. So they won't get uh, going again for another two weeks. Right. And, you know, we had this a lot in the spring with softball, baseball. I remember when we had Coach Winicky on. We talked more weather than we talked baseball, unfortunately. Yeah. But, yeah, and it's, I mean, uh, so you hope that the, doesn't happen with some of these fall right. sports. It's the too. nature of the beast, you know, and, and uh, I think that Coach Anderson certainly didn't want to cancel that meet, but uh, with the trails in the conditions they were, it was, it was just more for the safety of the student athletes than anything right, else. Right. All right, that's going to do it for this week's Cardinals Nest. We're glad that you could join us. Tune in again next week right here on HBC TV 25.